Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. John Belkowitz here. We got a fun video today, a Q and A. Um, we had somebody called up and ask why all of a sudden there was major cement shortages in Texas. So uh, got a few of those phone calls. So this video is all about when things go bad and change is forced. Like I said, my name is John Belkowitz. I'm excited to get into this today. You know, if you didn't know what Intelligent Concrete does for a living, we focus on bringing new and emerging technologies to the industry. And some of the most awesome technology you ever did see, either making concrete glow, uh, arresting cracks, sealing and healing, uh, generating electricity. One thing that we have found over the last decade plus that we've been doing this is uh, it's very difficult to bring new and emerging technology into a concrete industry that is slow to adopt, uh, that is resistant, maybe that's a, it's a tough way of saying it, but resistant to change. So again, when things go bad and change is forced, and this is one of those moments where, oh gosh, I mean, things are going bad and, in Texas. So let's get into our top three things. First of all, what's the sitch? <laughs> what's the sitch? And if you don't know what, what the, Whitney, what is the sitch? The situation, I what's, assume. What's the sitch and why is it so sus? Oh my gosh. That's what the kids are saying. So what's the situation and what is, why is it so suspect? Sus, if you will. So, uh, Texas cement production took a major, major hit. Uh, there's a plant uh, in a certain part of Texas that um, the kiln, uh, or the, I should say, the system broke down, uh, drove up the heat, or the heat was driven up a little bit too much, and the briquettes uh, that are in the system ended up breaking down, uh, causing them to have to shut down the system. And uh, ultimately, when you shut down that portion, you stop cement production. So how long is this gonna take to fix? From our sources, we've heard anywhere from 12 months to 18 months to, I don't know, man, it's gonna take a while. Um, and then of course, what does that mean once they get it fixed, are we going to immediately see cement production? And what we've heard is no, once the fix is uh, put in place, then we'll need to go through a calibration process, or the cement company will need to go through a calibration process uh, before they can start producing cement that'll go out to the local market. So if you add about three months on top of that, and that would be assumed maximum, we're talking anywhere between uh, one year, at a minimum if everything goes right, up to two years if a lot of things go wrong. Uh, so what does this mean, especially for local Texans, uh, folks who are trying to deal with this and figure out how to get that plain Jane concrete out the door, uh, even the higher standard or the, the premier concrete out the door too. Um, so the, you know, you have options. Um, the first option is, you know, to this, I mean, major cement shortage that you're going to feel for two years now, or maybe a little less than two years, or maybe a year, but you're going to feel the cement shortage for a long time, and you still, if you're in Texas or in the surrounding area, you've got to meet the demand of construction. So here are your options, four of them. You can import cement out of state from across the big blue pond from India or China. You could bring it in. That's expensive. Now, because you're in Texas, depending where you're at, you might be close to a port, but that being said, it's still going to be expensive. Number four, you can look at alternative supplementary cementitious materials or SCMs and driving those SCMs like your class F flashes, your metacalons, your silica fumes. Unfortunately, one of the things that we know about Texas is that they've had low volumes of quality as well as just low volumes of class F fly ash for a fairly long time. Um, so now we're making a problem even more difficult because we don't have that supplementary cementitious material that we would normally use. But Again, you could bring in some slag from India, some slag from China, FASH, or from continental United States too. But again, that's going to be expensive. And the reliability of that, especially if you're bringing it over from the big blue pond, India and China, or other places, 
the reliability, especially with shipping, is going to be tough. Um, the other thing is a little bit more cynical. Stop producing concrete. Just shut your doors. And of course, that's not an option, especially when we're talking about big ready mix companies who've got a lot of folks to employ and a lot of projects still on the table. Stop producing concrete is not an option. So when, big, when things go bad, we are forced to change. So what I'm suggesting is, is the use of a non-traditional cement-based material. Um, Portland limestone-based cements, ASTMC 1157 cements. They're not prescriptive-based cements, meaning you don't get the mill cert, the chemical and physical makeup of it. You get a performance-based cement. Based on your needs, you grab the cement that meets that performance or a little bit greater than that performance. Now, the issue with this is that these PLCs, these Portland limestone-based cements, are not the traditional ASTMC 150 cements that we're so used to, especially when this happens overnight. So we're not used to these cements, and when I mean that, our concrete mixes, whether they're the standard conventional concrete or the premier based, the, the, the fresh and hardened properties are based on a combination of not just uh, cement, rock, sand, and water, but also a boatload of admixtures. And those admixtures, they tend to work differently with limestone based cements compared to the hydraulic or ASTMC 150 based cements. So I understand that using these can be a, oh, it can be a nightmare, especially when you're used to these cements that are just creamy and dreamy and take off like a bad idea, you know what, I get it. But what other choice do you have? Bringing in some cement from India or a slag from India or from Indiana or Chicago? I mean, it's, if you have the local material and all it means is you need to break the surly bonds of what you're comfortable with and start learning how to use a new cement, which of course there are gonna be hiccups, there are gonna be problems associated with that, but bringing in cement from other places or slag, or you're still gonna have those same problems. You know, trying something new from this list is probably the most difficult one. Stop being uh, concrete production, uh, th that's the easiest one because that's just an on option we can really, it's not a viable option. The last one, trying something new, is the uncomfortable one, but oftentimes leads, especially if you put your heart into it, the best results. Um, you know, the payout from this, what I hope you got out of this, and I left these notes on the board, um, is uh, first I wanted you to know what's causing this issue. And for those of you out there who are living this, I, I probably didn't get all the details right, but bear in mind, I've got third party information. Uh, what we do know is that there is a sitch and it is sus. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, what I also hope you get out of this is how to respond. I gave you four options. Now, three of those options we can work out and we could deal with. One of them is just absolutely ridiculous. Now, if you want to go through any of those three options outside of the, you know, stopping that concrete production, and, and you just don't have the technical support, reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to get you back on your feet, get production going again. I mean, this is what we do for a living. So let us know if you got any concrete questions, concrete concerns. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ding that bell for notifications. Go concrete! Beat ass, mom. Well.